One of the most unusual events recorded in the Bible is found in Genesis chapter 32. Now, the backstory to this incident begins back in chapter 27. In this chapter, we read the story of Jacob and Esau, who were twin brothers. But Esau was technically the oldest of the two and in line to receive the birthright blessing of the firstborn from his father Isaac. Things get really interesting when Jacob, at the urging of his mother Rebekah, takes the place of Esau and receives the blessing that had been given to him by Esau for a bowl of beans. Jacob is forced to flee for his life when his father Isaac dies. And in his new homeland, he marries two daughters of Laban, his mother's brother, Leah and Rachel. God then instructs Jacob to return to his homeland and to not be afraid of his brother Esau anymore. This is found in Genesis 31, verse 3, where we read, Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your family, and I will be with you. Then later in verse 13 we read, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar and where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land, and return to the land of your family. So at God's direction, Jacob sneaks away from his father-in-law to return to uncertainty in the land of Canaan, where he fears the reaction of his brother Esau. The story for today takes place on this journey back to Canaan, where Jacob has concerns as to what his brother Esau may do to him and his family. He comes bearing gifts to do his best to assuage Esau's anger. Now, as he journeys homeward, we read this unusual statement at the beginning of chapter 32 of Genesis. So Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's camp. Jacob determines to send a gift to Esau ahead of his family to see if Esau would be appeased. Jacob gives instructions to his servants who go forward bearing the gifts. This is recorded in Genesis 32, verse 20. And also say, Behold, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me, and afterward I will see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. So the present went on over before him, but he himself lodged that night in the camp. And now the story really gets interesting. While Jacob was alone in the camp, having sent his wives and children across the brook Jabbok, we are told that a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. But this wasn't a mere man, but the one who later would become Jesus Christ. This was the being identified as Yahweh in the Old Testament. We see revealed in the New Testament that there were two beings who made up the Godhead. But the one who interacted with human beings was the one who later became Jesus Christ, the Savior for all mankind. In the King James Version and the New King James Version of the Bible, you will see that the word man is capitalized, showing the realization that this was a divine being and not merely an angel. In fact, we read in verse 30 that Jacob recognized that this wasn't a man or an angel, but God himself. Notice Jacob's words in verse 30. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. Now to the story and the purpose for this episode of our podcast. Verse 28. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. And then in verse 29 we read, And he blessed him there. We have the introduction of the name Israel, which means prince with God. Jacob enters into a special relationship with God. He is the recipient of the promises that God made to his grandfather Abraham, passed on to him through his father Isaac. Jacob was the father of twelve sons who became the twelve tribes of Israel which became a nation and focal point of Scripture in the Old Testament. Later, these promises are passed down to his son Joseph and his two sons Ephraim and Manasseh. There is a lot to this story, and it has reverberations down to our day with the identity of ten of the twelve tribes lost to history. But the Bible promises that they will be in existence when Christ returns. They have not been destroyed, and they have received some of the most amazing blessings ever given to human beings that same birthright promise that originated with Abraham. Well, that's another story, though, for another time. This has been Jim Franks with an amazing story from the pages of the Bible, the story of a man wrestling with God and the blessing that he received from that event. Tune in next time for another episode of our podcast, Verse by Verse. 
Verse by Verse is a companion podcast to the Daily Bible Verse blog, which you can find on the Life, Hope, and Truth Learning Center. Check out the show notes for more.